Hello everyone and welcome back. So we got a good one for you today. I think this might be the first retreat I've been able to post on here because I usually do these in two visits, so haven't been able to get this guy back until now. So you can see short fills, not looking really pretty, huge, massive infection. This poor kid, he was 17, just get massive infection and swelling. You can kind of see the swelling there along the buckle. There's some on the palatal as well. And mostly what I want to show here is to show my good friend Logan that you can remove gutta percha without using chloroform. <laughs> so this one goes out to you, Logan. Uh, going through that zirconia crown, using the same burrs like we would normally here and when it comes to the conversation as retreats whether or not you want to use you know chloroform or not the benefits there is chloroform does dissolve gutta percha that's why we use it um, it does also create a huge mess um, obviously there's some hazards you're not really concerned about it because of the rubber dam and we're using such tiny amounts but you do want to kind of consider that as well for me though it's the mess it's the how just much of it it's sticky it just gets everywhere and kind of creates a big mess inside there so um, I'm gonna show kind of how I I approach this here as you can see from those initial images it was large as far as the sizes of this so I'm not too too concerned I'm not this is not gonna be one of my minimally invasive cases for sure um, there is a mist MB2 as well that we'll go after here but it kind of just joins up so as far as retreat what we like to do get inside there um, I like to remove try to remove just composite uh, not remove any tooth structure if possible here and so I'm using that little skinny 850 to ex you know kind of expose that composite this is a thermophil case and what you'll find with a lot of the thermophil cases is when the dentists go and you know, there's a ton of gutta percha on the thermophil carriers to begin with and so when you access inside there not only are you going to be removing composite you usually have to remove a fair amount of gutta percha because it's just kind of sloppy and left inside there so I like to kind of get down to the floor as you can see um, get everything nice and flat here. First thing we're going to do is go down with our heated instrument. You can see the operation uh, on the palatal was quite garbage. I was able to drop pretty much to length right away just with the heated instrument. This 4504 tip seems to be the best size to, you know, you almost need like a heft of heat to get inside there. But this is the first thing we need to do. Remove as much as possible with this, get all that out of there, and then we come right on in with an F1. So the F1 I'm using is from S White. They are the like gold knockoffs, and you want to spin these guys fast. Uh, the How these work is absolutely as it heats up, the friction is actually gonna grab the gutta percha and pull it up. You can see how much is coming up and we already have a carrier out. So sometimes you can actually get carriers out this way. I'll show you how I got the rest out, but it's always when you get a carrier out that fast, it's a good day. <laughs> so thermophil retreats are something that I've done many, many, many of them. Um, longer discussion as to why or if the material actually causes the need for retreats or if it's user error, I'm not gonna comment on that right now because that's a full lecture that I may end up giving to the students one day. Um, I was able to grab the MB2 right away too. Uh, this is one of those you'll see in the final image here. It's not a true like separate MB2 all the way down. I'm not sure what exactly caused the failure of this, whether it was the untreated anatomy, you know, the MB2, whether it was the untreated apical anatomy, the short fill, the material itself, you know, something. There's lots of different things that cause this tooth to fail, unfortunately, but we got him feeling a lot better. So going back in um, and you can see there's a lot of brushing motion. So I, I will go kind of go uh, against the side and try to get all this up. And this is where normally you would be using chloroform. Actually, they probably would use chloroform already by this point. Um, but this is where you'd normally use chloroform here. Um, sometimes I'm able to get away with using the actual triton and rinsing in there. Sometimes I actually have to get inside and just rinse it out with water because there's so much junk. The next thing we're going to use is our SX. And so that is a more aggressive file. I like using the Pro Taper series for my retreats because these files are very aggressive as far as how sharp they are and what they, and they have this really strong pulling motion with it as well. And the SX is one, I went away from it for a long time, hadn't used it much, and it is a godsend for retreats, especially on big broad cases like big palatals or distals, lower molars, where there's a lot of gutta percha, you can spin it fast and put, even just push it against the gutta percha and it will usually rip out pieces all at once, which is very, very cool. So you can see lots of rinsing here. I knew I was going to two-step this one. He was, a, this is a true acute apical abscess case. Poor guy was in a lot of pain, drove from about four hours away too, um, but we got them, got them all fixed up. So how do I get the rest of the carriers out? Well, I use headstrums. And so in this case, you can, um, I have all the headstrums on my file forcep holders because um, I can actually see where I'm placing it and sometimes you can just get in and get lucky like this I could see it was flipping around so I was able to just grab that one and pull it out as is um, that kind of down and you'd want to do a lateral motion to grab the gutta percha and pull it up um, on this one here wasn't able to get as much purchase because the MBs kind of joined up like that it's more of a broad oval so what I like to do is pull down or kind of watch wind down and then lift up as you saw what that does the the plastic is a lot softer than the um 
than the actual dentin. And so you're able to have the flutes of the head strum engage the plastic a little bit better. And then when you pull, it's going to pull up just on the plastic and not the actual dentinal walls as well. So sometimes you'll find that there are these little isthmuses where there's got a purchase stuck. And so you actually have to go back in with your high speed. And that's what I was doing there. And then rinse and everything out. So I do a combination of, you know, if you have a large amount of stuff or things that might get stuck in the actual uh, tip when you're rinsing, I like to go in there and rinse with water. Anyway, from here on out, it's pretty much what you've all seen before. I'll go through the whole thing just so that we have it. But, you know, working length that we could do. Um, I ended up finishing both of these cases to F1s, or sorry, all these canals to F1s. They're kind of the size that they were initially anyway. Um, that MB2, as you saw, it kind of just joined up. It was a, definitely a type two, joined up pretty high. But they're still important to find. I have the number of cases where I see failures where everything else looks good and yet there's still you know a problem right there. it's it's more common than you think so i um, going back in rinsing like we've done before and this is just uh, just lots and lots of rinsing here with how infected this tooth was um, you, you want to get solution through this just to help make sure there's no junk in there and one of the things I'm looking for is am I still seeing things coming out of the canals and you can pretty clearly see here that we are still having drainage from these canals there's still some pieces of get a percha coming out and so you want to get things nice and clean um, do you have to remove every piece of gutta percha no you're not going to uh, it's, it doesn't matter if you use chloroform they've shown that study time and time and time again the only way to remove all of the gutta percha is to extract all of the tooth that's the only way to actually get it all out so just realize when you're doing retreats the cases are not going to be as pretty as say the you know minimally invasive cases you may have seen um, sometimes gutta percha gets left behind and it's not the end of the world one thing I do like to do with nasty cases like this is use that microsuction a lot now if you don't have an ASI cart you can still get a hookup that attaches to your regular um, high volume suction I use this at places where I didn't have the cart, but it's really important to try to get as much of that infection out of there as possible. This both gives more room for the calcium hydroxide, as you can see, as well as removes those irritants. This is kind of why the, this is the idea behind the gentle way of not causing pain as much after is because of the heavy suction actually removes all the pro-inflammatory factors. One thing I like to do too on these big nasty cases is fill up the entire chamber with the calcium hydroxide. This is, does two things. When I put the sponge in the cabinet in there, it actually kind of acts like a plunger and pushes it in there and then it also gives you more of a reservoir for calcium hydroxide um, the access was a little bit wonky with where those uh, mbs ended up so i had some sharp spots here just smooth those off with a barrel burr and then come in with the cavity and you can see when you push in the calcium hydroxide coming out the side once you get it all in there and push with the cotton pellet it's actually going to help push the calcium hydroxide apically and into any uh, ramifications or other things that you may need to do there so um, going through here and that is what the calcium hydroxide should look like so we still have a little bit of gut pressure to get out. You'll kind of see in the final, we got it all out where it look a lot better. Um, but it's been a month. He feels great. No more swelling. Everything's back. So go ahead and clean that out. I'm using a larger diamond here because it fit the size just pretty much perfectly. Um, and you can see as soon as we hit into that area where the calcium hydroxide was, it just sprays everywhere. So I'm um, going in here with that 20 K file just to kind of a dislodge any, you know, loose gutta percha that's kind of been cleaned out now with the calcium hydroxide and B to make sure that we're still patent and no issues as far as for our operation. Um, so that's kind of what we're doing here. Sometimes I'll have to go back with rotary files, but if you're struggling with a piece of gutta percha being stuck in there, it's nice to just throw the calcium hydroxide in, give it a month to kind of clean itself up. And you'll find when you come back, it's sometimes actually loose. So what we're doing here is our final rinse. I sped this all up because you guys have seen this before, uh, bleach, EDTA, and then isopropyl alcohol. This is one where I like to, when I do the initial rinse, I'm rinsing until I don't see any materials coming up anymore, whether that be gutta percha or junk. You shouldn't see any junk at this point because the calcium hydroxide did its job. Um, and then we're gonna go ahead and seal this case up. I'm gonna use the squirt technique for this one. Um, oh, Scott, you can't use the squirt technique. It's too big. Uh, I'm not really worried about it here because we had the whole month to heal up and because we have a pretty solid stop, um, I'm not concerned about overfill and you'll see in the final, there's a little sealer puff, but nothing nothing excessive whatsoever as far as an overfill. But we're gonna do that same technique. One thing I will say though, is if you are learning and practicing the squirt technique, you need to vary the pressure of both your plugger and how fast and how hard you're putting the actual thing. So doing this palatal here, I'm not going down that far. As you can see, it fills up almost immediately and I'm going to very gently 
push inside there and you can see the mirror is not moving near as much as it did with the other ones and one thing you can do is after you use that skinny end flip around to the thicker end that's the 70 right there and that will still get you your apical compression but not nearly as strong as the other ones so finish up the rest of the case um, alcohol like normal just to get all the sealer out of there uh, clean it up I did use the pack mac here on that distal we had a little bit of trouble getting uh, you know completely patent but ha very pleased with how it all turned out here um, same thing with that Pac Mac. You can vary how you can't really change the speed because it's you know it's just slow speed. It's going to be running at twenty thousand. I, I I don't have really good foot control with the slow speed. <laughs> I do the high speed, not with the slow speed. And what you can do is just not push that down as far. So I was only going down maybe a third of the way, whereas normally I'd go at least half. And just because you don't want to push it too much, um, sometimes on large cases I won't even use the Pac Mac. I will wait until we take the check film to see if I even need to do it. And especially on a case if I'm one stepping something that has a finding or has op uh, an open area inside there, you're not going to have as much back pressure. So you don't want to, you know, send stuff shooting out the end of it. Um, and then kind of showing you what everything looks like as far as our final. You can see here where that MB2 was just kind of a fin that came off, but that is enough sometimes to cause failure. So it is still important to find MB2s. The incident is far higher than you will think. Um, I, I, I would highly agree it's in the 90s. <laughs> so there's what the final looks like. I'm very pleased with how that all turned out. Um, he's going back to his general dentist to get this all sealed back up, but kind of a cool case. I wanted to mostly show how I treat retreats and do a thermofill at the same time. Um, as always, if you have any questions, I do read every comment. Uh, go ahead and leave those below, and thank you so much for watching, and please let me know if there's anything else you'd like to see. Um, I'm trying to diversify the channel and not just show the same thing, so I make this these videos for all of you out there, so I do appreciate it, and I will talk to you next time. Thank you.